today I'm gonna bake lasagna. So you gotta get the sauce going very early. Typically I do it the day before or it's already in the fridge, but I don't have any sauce. So I'm gonna bring you through the whole process of me making my red sauce, my meat sauce basically. And then I'll get the bechamel later, get the lasagna noodles going, and then put it all together and bake it for dinner tonight. Cause Judy has a friend coming over. The girls were asking for this, so I'm, I'm hyped to make this. This is about nine, maybe 10 onions that I cut earlier. That's already cooked down to this beautiful sweetness. It, it smells amazing. All I used was avocado oil, a little bit of salt, and those onions, but this adds some natural sweetness because the caramelization brings out all those good sugars. I've got my beef stock that I made not too long ago. It's frozen, so that's why it still looks like an ice cube in the middle. I've got the heat going down below just to get it going, just so it melts, because this is the base of my red sauce. This is what gives it its decadence, its deliciousness, its depth of flavor. For the protein, we're doing one of my Wagyu beefs and two pounds of mild Italian sausage. Normally I get one hot one, um, but Judy bought this. This is Hempler's, a local brand. And then I don't always get San Marzano, but once in a while I do get some San Marzano. Costco just started selling this San Marzano whole tomato, so this is a good deal. If you see it, definitely grab it. I've got the control freak over here with my big Dutch oven. This is Staub. I'm gonna get things going and it's gonna be cooking on the stove basically for the next two to four hours, probably more like four hours. And then, yeah, it's gonna be really good. I'm gonna start with the tomatoes. These are whole tomatoes. Just way better if you can get them from a whole tomato state. They're the most least processed. All I do is I dump it into this bowl. I will save this. I'm gonna put some water in here and this is gonna be some tomato juice to deglaze the pan later. Now the thing about using whole tomatoes, it does take a while. It's a commitment by finding you get the best flavor out of your sauce. This is the authentic way of doing it. I'm not opposed to using diced tomatoes or even like a pasta sauce. In fact, sometimes I do half whole tomatoes and half already cooked jar sauce. I'm gonna crush all these. This looks like a lot of tomatoes, a lot of meat, a lot of beef stock, but it's all going to cook down. I really try to concentrate all the flavors and that's what makes it into a very delicious sauce, especially for something like a lasagna. You want the sauce to be maybe a little bit more stronger in its flavor because it's going to be competing against the bechamel and there's uh, lasagna noodles. So I go on the side of more concentrated, more flavor, plenty of umami. Caramelized onions. This is the first thing I start cooking. I didn't even show you guys me slicing it, prepping it, or getting it started because that was about an hour ago. This is about the doneness I want. You could go farther with it, but because it's going into the sauce, it's gonna disintegrate anyways. There's really no need to go any farther than this. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my God, that's sweet. That's like sugar right there. Okay, so in the same pan that I made the caramelized onions, I've got some olive oil going. I don't wanna waste all that flavor that's in the pan. I just rough chopped some garlic. I'm gonna put it in there with the olive oil. That's just about enough. I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the heat. Going to pour that in there. You gotta be very, very careful. Oh yeah, oh baby. And like I said, it's gonna take a while, so I will be saving that as well. I'm gonna put some water in those cans, put some water in here, and then that'll be some reserve moisture. Turning up the heat again, and I'm stirring this. So my goal here, to really cook this down, maybe by half at least, I will add other tomato ingredients, like tomato paste, and even some uh, pre-cooked sauce as well. Decided to go for a whole nother can. Sometimes I use the other sauce to give it a consistency and flavor, but you're gonna get a much, much superior flavor when you cook these down and it concentrates all that tomato goodness. This is what I do with the tomato cans. There's still some tomato juices on the side. I fill one can up with a little bit of water and basically I'm rinsing off all the goodness on the sides because I don't want to waste it. Then what I have, some tomato liquid that I can use. If I want to deglaze a pan or maybe I need to add a little bit of extra moisture. So next I'm going to get the meat prepared. All I'm gonna do here is sear all the meat and then get that, I call it the meat soup ready. The reason I put it on a plate like this is I like to kind of break it up right in the plate first. I even salt and pepper this so that when I add it to the pot, it is already broken apart. 
Now this Hempler's pork is already kind of nice and loose, which is great, but then that way it's less work inside the pot. So I do do this in batches. I don't want to overcrowd my pot. Now this pot is on the control freak, so it's going to be able to handle quite a bit. I'm going to turn it on high. I don't want to add all three packs. See those brown bits right there? That's what you're going for right there. That's where the flavor is at. You don't have to have everything seared like that, but that's gonna help. And the reason there's some liquid, or it looks like there's liquid, is because I deglaze the pan with a little bit of the beef stock. Once it caramelized the pork, it was a little stuck on there. And that liquid, even just a little bit, helps to get it all off of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all this ground pork, add my ground beef, and then I'll be ready to add all the beef stock and you'll see what I do after that. Take the ground beef. Now oh, it's time to sear this. Come on. The beef is done cooking. It's looking delicious. I'm gonna add the pork back in there. I'm gonna add all of this delicious caramelized onions. Then I'm gonna add all of this beef stock, and I know this is a lot of liquid, but I'm gonna let this cook for the next two to three hours, and all that flavor is gonna get concentrated. It's gonna be delicious, as I always say. It's also healthy because it's got all that bone broth in there. Let's go ahead and turn on the heat over here for now. Then I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Both the beef soup and the tomato sauce are just gonna cook there on low heat for the next two hours. Judy's gonna watch all this for me and stir it periodically, but it's on such a low heat that it won't even need a lot of attendance. And then after I'm done working out, I'm gonna put these together and then get everything ready for the lasagna. Oh, babe, I'm about to leave, but I want to tell you uh, what to do here. So this is on such a low heat that maybe every 15 minutes, just check on it. You don't really even have to stir this one that often. Every 15 to 20 minutes is fine, okay? okay? It's been a solid, I wanna say three hours now. The meat soup is about half, two thirds of what it was originally. But what I'm gonna do now is combine the two. I already tasted both, they're amazing. When you reduce the tomatoes down just like this, you really bring out the natural sweetness. Additionally, the acidity of the tomatoes goes away, so it's smoother and toned down. Typically, I still add some sugar, hence why I caramelize the onions. And I have a couple other tricks that I'll show you too. But first, I'm gonna move all of this tomato sauce. It's tomato sauce now. The chunks have been cooked down into the pot or the stob pot with the meat in it and I'll further cook this for another, I wanna say, an hour. While this is cooking down, I'm gonna get the rest of the lasagna ingredients ready. Probably the bechamel first, and then the lasagna noodles. Mix it all together. See, this still has a good one, one and a half inches to go down. And then it should be good here in about one and a half hours. All right. Woo! So one of the most annoying parts of making lasagna are the noodles. Thank God for YouTube because I saw this cool hack where instead of boiling water, putting it in there, and you guys know what I mean if you've done this, kind of a task. So this is a little hack that I did try once, but you let it sit in this pan, heat up, soak up, and basically get soft or prepped to be used for the stack. There you go. I'm gonna cover it. 20 minutes. Gonna make bechamel. This is really a Parmesan cheese sauce, but it starts with the bechamel. Got my four cups of milk, seven tablespoons of flour, seven tablespoons of butter, salt and white pepper, and I'll be adding this Parmesan. So this is a white sauce layer that goes in between the different layers. So what I'm gonna do is just melt the butter, but it will probably sizzle here. 
Oh yeah, that's... So when it's too hot like that, I just remove it off the heat directly. I don't want it to turn colors. It is slightly turning, that's okay. Bechamel is such a nice sauce and it's a good skill to master because you can use it for so many dishes. I use bechamel for obviously lasagna for my fettuccine alfredo. I know that's not traditional, you know, the American creamy version of fettuccine alfredo. It's a nice base. It's used for a lot of other dishes. So if one of my neighbors or my friends said, hey, um, I need bechamel, could you come over and make it? I would totally go there and make it for them. I love bechamel. Or if the girls want something that uses bechamel, I look forward to the opportunity to. So now that everything's melted, I'm gonna turn the heat up slightly. I want it to be bubbling because you're gonna cook this flour and put it in there. You want it to be cooking there. See that sizzle? You want that. Constantly stir. You don't want any clumps. This part of the process is just to cook the flour and cook out the rawness. I grew up eating lasagna with ricotta cheese for the white layer. If I went to a fancy restaurant, I think in New York City, and I tried a lasagna at an Italian place that had bechamel, kind of blew my mind. Ooh, smelling like buttered toast. And I can see the color changing oh so slightly. It's got kind of a, a tan color now and that's signaling that it's browning, which is okay, but you definitely don't want it to brown anymore from here. Now at this point, I'm gonna start adding the milk. So a lot of times I do warm up the milk, but today I'm just gonna go straight cold milk. Whoa, whoa, see that's a little bit too hot. I'm gonna add a whole bunch to try to cool it down. There you go, it's gonna clump up here. There's this YouTube video, this Japanese chef. It was a raw bechamel tutorial, meaning there was no cuts. He just straight recorded it. I'd say it was the most masterful bechamel video I've ever seen. Now there's different methods to it. Some people use warm milk, some people use cold milk. Some people do this. This The Japanese chef used a wooden spatula like this at the first part because he was talking about how you're, you're trying to work it with the wooden spatula. It was hard for me to understand because he was speaking Japanese, but yeah, I was fascinated. I watched it maybe four or five times and that's how I initially learned. He did it so differently than anybody I've ever seen in other videos. Unfortunately, I can't find it anymore. I don't know what happened to it. It was a really old video. You're talking 2011 even. It was even square. I'm just letting it do its thing, turning up the heat a little bit. It's time to really integrate it. One reason I like practicing how to make bechamel is because I tried different methods. Today I'm trying the cold milk method and I'm putting bigger amounts of milk inside of this at a time versus small amounts. All right, so I'm adding the rest of the milk. I may add some more milk a little bit later because it is quite thick. This was a quick version. What, eight minutes? I guess that, yeah, that's about right. Normally if I do it the more traditional way where I put the milk slowly, little by little. It does take me about 10 to 15 minutes, but there you go. Bechamel. Once this thickens a little bit more, I will add some salt, some white pepper, some Parmesan, and I'll be ready. Salt, white pepper. Turn off the heat. Add the Parmesan. You don't want the heat on at this point. More Parmesan.
right, I'm done. I'm gonna rearrange the shells, but it's gonna be in the oven for the next 45 to 50 minutes. I did peek in the oven halfway through just to check it. Oh my lord! Oh my lordies, look at that. Woo, woo, woo. Just, the cheese looks so perfect. Perfectly golden brown. It's oozing out the sides. And I love the look of the top. Normally I broil the top, but this time I didn't have to. I left it uncovered. Like many dishes, you wanna let it rest for at least 10 minutes. I would even say maybe 15 plus minutes just so that it settles and then it's a lot easier to cut. I will say one thing about that method I have swore by. I don't think it worked that well. Couple things, one, you saw the sticking of the pasta noodles. That was not ideal at all. I did not do that last time. I was using a different lasagna last time. So I don't know if that was part of it. And secondly, I tried the pasta noodles, the, part, uh, the leftovers that I didn't use in this and I didn't like the consistency, but it might have been the brand. So I'm not sure. I had I usually use another brand. Uh, Judy said we had a couple lasagna boxes already, so I didn't even question it. But right now I'm thinking, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm gonna just boil the noodles like the directions say. Uh, I thought, you know, as I mentioned, I love experimenting. I love trying new things and learning what works, what doesn't work, what works better what maybe doesn't work as good. Um, and this time that method, I wasn't a big fan of it. I might try it again with those other noodles, uh, the organic ones, but this time I use non-organic. I don't think it was organic, but there might've been a different level of quality for the brand that I normally use. The girls just got back from being outside. The little ones are about to wake up from their nap. Judy just got done with her kettlebell workout, so it's gonna be a nice treat for dinner. So when you let it rest, it's going to stay together a little better. Some people, they take a spatula right to this, which totally is fine, but if you want that precision, you want it to be beautiful coming out. Let's see if I can do it. Oh my lord, this. Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh, tell me that ain't the most beautiful thing ever. There you go, lasagna. This is such a geeky thing, but this is what you want. You want to be able to cut a slice and it doesn't just completely fall apart. You can kind of see it's melting off a little bit, but look at this edge. It's just staying together because it was resting. Now, if you cut this open way too early, it would just all melt out. Nothing wrong with that, because ultimately you're gonna just eat it, but if you want a uniform piece like this, this is what you gotta do. Meaty, cheesy, saucy lasagna. That's what's for dinner. Okay, now the taste test. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's been almost 25 minutes, and it's still hot enough to burn my mouth but it's delicious. See, 45 minutes is a sweet spot for being in the oven, because any longer than that, the bechamel sometimes will melt away or it'll kind of combine with the sauce. Could you just entertain one taste test for me, please? Go ahead, big bite.